I have been using this router at a spin off for my CNC machine for a while and I have to say that I'm very happy with the power that it provides. But it's really loud, like it wakes everyone in the house up every time I try to run it and also that is a brush motor. Like I have to open this side and this side from time to time to change the brushes. And by now I really have enough with the noise so I decide to get something quieter. Here's what I get to replace this router, it's a 2.2 kilowatt with a cool spindle. As you can see that is huge, it's a lot bigger compared to this router and it's also really heavy. I'm not sure if this type of motor can lift it up and down, but if it cannot I just change it to something bigger later. The reason that I choose water cool spindle even though it's more complicated to connect like it have water and water tubing coming in and out from the spindle to cool it down but compared to the air cool spindle it doesn't have the fan to blow air to cool the spindle down so it will be less noisy. Apart from that everything else the same, the connection and everything. This set of spindle it come with the spindle, the spindle clamp, the VFD, the water pump and some tubing, the connector here. So the set is complete and it costs about $300. Now to test this spindle to make sure that it is working and also to compare the noise level to this router I just going to connect it to the VFD and see how it works. Here's the connector to connect to this end of the spindle. It has 4 pins. The numbers are on here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Just remember that the pin number 4 you cannot mix up with the others. It's the pin to connect the ground wire. The other 3 is not a big deal if you mix them up. Uh, if you do mix them up, the spindle might turn in the opposite direction that you wanted. So to change the direction, you just swap the two wires on the VFD. Now to connect the wire to this connector, I only need to open it by turning this a few rounds. And so there's some wire to this end of the connector. And I just going to use the black wire for the pin number 4. Now I have the wire connect to this end of the spindle. This black wire is the ground wire and uh, the order will be red, blue, yellow is 1, 2, 3, so U, V, W and, uh, and that will be the order that I need to connect this end to the VFD. The VFD that I got with the kit is uh, YL620A, it's 110 volt and 2.2 kilowatt. So now I have to connect the wire inside here, so I have to open this panel. Okay, so the first row up here are the signal control pin to connect to the breakout board that I will connect later. Down here are the power connector, so you have to connect it to the AC source and also the output to the spindle here. And the name of the connector are down here. You have the neutral lines, W, V, U and ground. So I just got to connect the wire first like this inside here. So I have to use the knife to make an opening here and here. Okay, so now I'm just going to connect the AC power source wire and then uh, I will be ready to test the spindle. This is the earth wire, I'm just going to connect it to the black wire on the spindle. Now I have all the wire connected here, I'm just going to turn it on to test this setup very quickly. I'm not going to connect the water tubing to the spindle just yet because I don't think that it's going to heat up very quickly and burn the spindle. So let me just see how it works. This is the knob to change the frequency to change the speed of the spindle. So I'm just going to lower it to make sure that it's run less slowly first. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to hold the spindle a little bit and press run. Now the spindle is rotated in the right orientation. Let me just try to vary the speed.
as you can see that the spindle turn up and down the speed very well and it doesn't have much vibration I can hold it with my hand without any problem at the maximum speed now I just going to show you the different in noise level between the router and this spindle this spindle doesn't have the speed control so it's always turning at the maximum speed so to be fair I just going to turn on the spindle also at the maximum speed to compare and what I'm going to do just I'm going to turn this on first and then I turn it off and turn the other one on I'm not going to adjust the sound level of the video just to compare so be aware that this is very loud <laughs> I'm sure that you can hear the difference. The new spindle is much less noisy even though it's bigger and more powerful. For the next step I would have to figure out how to mount this spindle clamp on this machine because it doesn't have any hole on this. So I think that I would have to make some drill guide to drill some holes here and then I can mount this clamp on one of the plates like this and then mount it on the machine. So let me just make some drill guide to like drill the holes and also some of the spindle holding plates. My idea about drilling holes on this spindle clamp is that I'm going to drill three holes on each side here. Uh, the holes will be right in the middle of the flange here. Uh, and to do that precisely, I made this drill guide. Just I have this slot to slide this spindle clamp inside here. And I have the three holes on each side that I will use that drill guide to drill through. And uh, as you can see that I will have to like push this in here. And drill on this side. And uh, as you can see here, this side is round, so it's not going to stand when I drill, it's going to like wobble like this. So to make sure that this surface stay like horizontal, I'm going to have to make a stand for this spindle clamp. To make the stand for this spindle clamp, I have here the base, and on each side, we have four pieces like this, stacked on top of each other, and I'm going to put them like this, like this. And then I will have the spindle clamp slide in between. At first I think that I will have to glue all the pieces together That's why I make all the holes here so I can line them up using this long bolt But now I think that I don't need to So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put all the pieces like this on the two sides And then uh, press this piece down Okay, so now it becomes like one block and it's really sturdy. It doesn't move when I press it down, this surface stay in position. So this is a stand just I'm going to use to drill the holes. So now I'm just going to pile this piece on here and then I'm going to go to the drill press to drill all the holes here. I think that I will use the 6mm drill bit. For the drilling, I'm just going to use some small bit like 3mm diameter to do some spotting drill first. Now I will go with 4.5mm And the last step will be 6mm Now as you can see that I have the holes here drilled perfectly in the middle of each side now the spindle clamp is ready to be installed on the machine but I don't want to do it right now because I want to connect the control board to this VFD first to see if I can turn on the spindle and also control the speed so let me just do that first as I show you in my previous video just uh, I use this RNR motion breakout board to control the machine the good side about this is that it is really cheap and it can be connected to the computer through the USB port the downside of being really cheap is that you cannot find any type of support or guide to connect this board to the VFD. It has all the pin needed here. You have the DMC, AMC and AVI. So AVI is the analog voltage interface that you will need to control the VFD. It varies from 0 to 10 volt. ACM is kind of the graph for the AVI pin and DCM is the graph for all the type of output from this board to the VFD. So it has all the pins but I don't know how to turn them on. So I have been digging around on internet and I couldn't find any guide anywhere. 
So I almost gave up on this board, but finally I stumbled on one of the posts on a forum just to show exactly how I should wire this board to the VFD. So let me just explain very quickly how I do it. And I also post the link of the forum thread in the description of this video. First of all, on this board, the 10 volt pin here, it actually not an output, it actually an input. So to able to get the signal from zero to 10 volt on the AVI pin, you will have to power the 10 volt pin here with a 10 volt power source. So I have here a DC step down from 36 volt to 10 volt to power this relay. So I just going to take that 10 volt and put it in here. And the ground of this uh, DC step down, I connect it to the ACM. And then I would have to connect the ACM here to the ACM pin on the VFD. For this DCM pin, I would have to connect the ground to this DCM pin and then connect this DCM pin to the DCM pin on the VFD. And on the VFD, as you can see that I can turn on the spindle in forward or reverse direction. But I only need forward, so I only need one output to turn that on. So I just want to use the output number two. I will show you how to configure this output and turn on this AVI pin later on the computer. Another thing about this output is that I want to use the signal from here to power this relay. So every time the spindle turn on, this relay also turn on to power the water pump to cool down the spindle. So now let me just show you all the configuration on Match 3. The setup in Match 3 is very easy. You just go to config, ports and pins, and then go to spindle. For the output to the relay, I only want the spindle to run into the forward direction. So I only put number two for both like clockwise and counterclockwise. And here I have to turn on use spindle model output, PWM control, and then um, PWM frequency, I just put 1000. I think that is it here. So I go to model output, and here the spindle is enabled, and I don't put anything here. I just put zero for everything. That's it. So I just going to click apply and OK. OK, and then click reset. And one more thing, you just have to go to plugin control, INR motion, and then uh, check here the spindle, multi-step speed, and save. And uh, now go to config, and uh, spindle pulleys, and here's, well, pulley number one, mean speed zero, and I put in here the maximum speed is 24,000. This is the maximum speed of the spindle that I got. So I click OK. So now if I turn on the spindle, the relay should click. And also if I measure the voltage between the AVI and ACM pin, I should get the corresponding voltage between 0 and 10 volts. For example, here I have SRO at 80%. I should get about 8 volts. So let me just try to turn on the spindle and measure the voltage and show you the voltage variation when I change the speed. So now I have the spindle is off, the relay is off, the reading is zero between AVI and ACM. So let me just turn it on. As you can see that the relay click and the reading is about 8.26 volt. So let me just vary the speed here. 70%. Seven point two six, sixty, fifty, forty, and go back up. Ninety percent, hundred percent, about ten volts. So it actually working. So the configuration of this port seems to be working. So let me just wire it to the VFD and see if I can turn on the spindle and vary the speed. One thing I just found out here, just if I connect the ground to the DCM pin, the relay won't turn on. So I just have to leave the DCM pin by itself. And I will use the ground here to connect to the DCM pin on the VFD. Here are the wires that I got from the control board. The red one is output from the relay. The yellow one is from the AVI. And this one is the ACM. And this one's the ground. So I just want to connect it on the corresponding pin here. From what I see here on the panel of the VFD, I would have to connect the red wire here to the forward pin, the black wire to the external ground pin, and the yellow wire to the VI1, and the blue wire to the ground. So let's see how it goes. I just had another look at the menu of the VFD and I saw that I also need the 10 volt input here uh, at the reference for the VI. So I just want to take the same 10 volt I put in the board and input into the VFD. Here's the wire, just I connect the 10 volt into here. 
Now I just going to power this and try to program it so I can control it with the computer. I just power it on and one weird thing happened, just the relay for the pump over there just like turn on. So I don't know why but I will deal with it later. Right now I just going to try to program this and try to vary the speed with the computer. To put in all the settings for the VFD, I just have a look at the manual. If you have different version of VFD, the programming might be a bit different. Just have a good look at your manual and put in all the numbers that you need. For me, the first thing to do is just to program all the power rating here so it doesn't burn the spindle and also the VFD itself. So for me, I have to program the P12 from 0 0.00 to probably P12.12. Uh, you have the rated motor current, you have uh, rated motor voltage and also the VFD current, VFD voltage, also the overheating point and when the cooling fan should be operating. So I just press on program and go to P12. Okay, so P12.00, I press test and here it programmed 15 amp. On my spindle, it show like 8.5 amps, so I just going to reduce this. And here the spindle voltage is 220, I just have to reduce it to 110. Okay, here the 12.02 pole number, I don't know, so I just leave it like that. I just continue. So I continue to P12.05, the converter rated current. Okay, so I just going to increase it to 22 amp because that's what it show on my VFD. Okay, and uh, 06. So now I also reduce this to 110. Those are the most important one, the other one it doesn't really matter. Like the uh, overheating point or the cooling point, you can program it but, uh, but you can also just leave it like that. For me I just leave it like that for now. Next step I have to go to P07.08 is to select the frequency source. So it will be number 3 just will be analog input. And the last one would be P00.01 and the setting should be number one is from the external control electric machinery. It should be the control board. So now the spindle on the computer is off, so frequency is off, so it's at zero. So let me just try to turn that on and see what the frequency here. Now I have the SRO at 10%, so if I turn this on, the frequency here should be 40 Hz. Wow, it's very jumpy. So let me just try to increase the speed a little bit to see the frequency stabilize. I don't know, somehow just when I increase this, the frequency does increase so it's kind of working but the frequency here very jumpy so the spin or speed not going to be stable. Let me just see what was the problem. I think that I found problem of the frequency jumping is that the signal output from the AVI pin on the board is actually not like analog voltage, it's still PWM. So that's why the frequency is still going up and down and jumping a little bit. So I will need a converter to convert PWM to real analog signal. After looking around, here's what I got from Amazon, it's a PWM to analog voltage converter. So it's supposed to take the PWM signal on this side and output the analog voltage on this side. And here the power supply input, it can take from 12 volt to 30 volt. And I already have the DC step down from 36 volt to 24 volt. So I will input the 24 volt in here. So let me just see if I can control the VFD with the output voltage. Here's how I connect the PWM converter board. So I have the 24 volts from here, power it in here. I have the AVI and ACM connect to here. And then now I will read the output from the 10 volt output here. Right now it reads 2.8 millivolts, so it's almost zero. So let me just turn on the spindle here and read the voltage here. Okay, so it say about 9.47 volts, so it's a bit high. Let me just try to vary the speed to see if it change. Okay. 90% is like 10 volts. 
100% is also 10 volts so I think that it's reached the maximum so let me just go down okay so 80% still 9.47 volts so it's quite stable okay so it's go down it's go down okay so right now it seems that the board is working but the voltage is a bit high so let me just try to adjust it okay so it has a potential meter here. I just try to turn it to see if I can lower the voltage. So 50% supposed to be 5 volt. Okay, so now I have 50% at exactly 5 volt. So let me just increase it to see what the maximum. Okay, 60% is at uh, almost 6 volt. Okay, it's quite close. Okay, 90% at 8.9 uh, volt. Okay, so now at 100% I have 9.5 volts. So I think that I will increase it so I can get the maximum speed out of the spindle. Okay, so now it's 10 volt at 100%. Let me just lower it to see what the number will be. 9.38, 8.34, I think just 0.3 volt different at the lower speed will be fine. So now let me just try to control the VFD with the output of this board. Now let's try to turn on the spindle again. So now as you can see that the frequency doesn't vary that much. So let me just try to vary the speed. Yeah, so it's only like vary a few hertz, so I think that would be fine. Now I can vary the frequency using the computer. So let me see if I can still turn on the spindle. Of course now I got the same problem, just the relay over there is closed. So let me just try to turn on the spindle anyway. So now I can turn it on and off, no problem. So let me just try to vary the speed. Now I have the spindle working correctly, I can like turn it on and off and vary the speed with the computer without any problem. So I am ready to mount this on the machine and then figure out what the problem with the relay. Finally I have this mighty spindle installed. I have the cable and the water tubing go out here, go on the other side. Right now I still have the problem with the relay is always on, but that will be fine. I just let the water pump always running, so it just cool the spindle down anyway. Now I'm just going to show you one example of milling with this spindle. But I think just keep showing you example of milling aluminum is kind of boring. So I'm just going to try to find a project that is fun and also still can show the performance of this spindle. I got this piece of scrap wood from fixing the house before so let's do something fun with it. I'm just going to try to make a 3D relief out of this. And the way I saw people usually do it that they have a flat end mill and do the clearance path. And then use this tapers, bone nose and mill to make the details on the motor. Um, but I think doing that is kind of defeating the purpose of having this type of bone nose end mill. It has really long cutting fluid. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to go directly to the parallel pass. So we have to dig down really deep. The first pass is going to like dig down like 20 millimeter and go all the way across. So it will need a lot of power. So hopefully this spindle is going to do it.
my camera will out of battery so you won't see the end of the job here but it was pretty much the same at the beginning so it didn't miss anything and the whole thing here took about four hours and a half to mill it took a lot longer compared to the simulation and i think this because of the step model that i have on the machine wasn't powerful enough so the acceleration kind of slow so when it have a lot of small movement here it have a lot of change in speed but the machine kind of accelerate very slow so that's why it took a lot longer compared to the simulation maybe in the future i will upgrade those stepper motors to something bigger to move faster but for now I'm pretty happy with this and here on this 3D relief you can still see a lot of horizontal line here this I think because of the bow nose diameter a bit too big is two millimeter so the step over wasn't far enough to cover all the line here and also if I use smaller diameter bow nose I can have a lot more details here but this I think look pretty good to me and also with this spindle as you can see that I can go really deep in the step down at the beginning I have the step down almost like 20 millimeter here and just go straight across and everything were cutting very smoothly so the spindle were really powerful so in the end I replaced the very noisy router with something bigger more powerful and a lot quieter so I think that the new spindle totally worth the money that I spent